We are coming to Beijing. We are brother. We are all sisters. <laughs> After recently reopening from three years of COVID isolation, we are heading to the People's Republic of China, a country we hear so much about, but one that most of us know so little of. China is often dubbed one of the most difficult countries to travel to and within. With a difficult visa policy, the lack of Western-based apps we've all become completely accustomed to when traveling, and difficulties using Visa and MasterCard. But there's actually a way to enter China without a visa and a passport. And with that in mind, we hopped on a plane and flew to Beijing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Welcome to Beijing Airport. Welcome to China. It is our first time here in China. And we haven't quite made it yet. We've still got passport control to go through. And we're arriving here trying to take advantage of the 144-hour visa-free rule that there is for both British citizens and Russian citizens. And that's available if you're flying into Beijing and out of Beijing to another country again, which we are. So um, yeah, hopefully everything will go to the right passport control. And we're gonna be in Beijing. We're in China. Oh my god. We actually only had to fill in a few short forms and have a chat with immigration and share our onward travel plans and they stamped our passports. It all took around a couple of hours and then we were through. It seemed like we were the last people leaving the airport but we finally made it and we can say welcome to China. The next step was to get a cab into the city and Uber, Grab, Bal, Maxim, Yandex or any of the taxi apps we're used to are completely useless in China. So we downloaded an app called Dida Travel and I'm not gonna lie, it took us an awfully long time to figure it out because everything is obviously in Mandarin, which we don't speak, but we got there in the end. Once we sat in the taxi, we were greeted by probably the world's friendliest cabbie and despite the language barrier and some confusion with how to accept the ride on the app, our journey went relatively smoothly. Thank you. Oh, that was an easy taxi ride, wasn't it? I really made it. I can't believe it. So we landed at two thirty, and the time now is six o'clock. Um, <laughs> you know, it took us maybe an hour or so to sort out all the documents and immigration, and then just all the rest of the time trying to sort out the taxi into mm -hmm. the city. We could have got a train, but then we would have still had to get a taxi from the main train station yeah. to here. So we just thought <clears throat> taxi all the way, and here we are three and a half hours later. But we've arrived, that's the main thing. <laughs> Good morning. Last night we were pretty zonked, to be honest, after getting in. It was a long, long travel day. It wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be a three hour flight and then a quick nip into Beijing center, but Everything's a little bit more complicated when you arrive here in China. The usual apps that we're used to when we're traveling most of the world don't work. So you need to download new apps, sign up to them. Most of them are only in Chinese, which makes it a little bit more difficult. You also have to sign up to Alipay in order to pay for anything with your foreign card. But once we'd sorted all that out, we got into the city and yeah, we were a little bit tired. So we went out for a little walk, a little look around and um, yeah, we're up bright and early this morning to um, go and explore Beijing. I still can't believe we're here, to be honest. It's absolutely unbelievable. I'm so over the moon. So looking forward to seeing a bit of China. You know what I'm really looking forward to as well? Starting our day with, you guessed it, picking chicken. Nope, picking duck. <laughs> <laughs> It does look like a tram. I thought at first it was a tram. So if Vietnam was full of motorbikes, China is full of normal bikes. Here in Beijing, when we were driving into the city yesterday, everyone was either on little electric scooters or bikes and um, provides a totally different vibe, to be honest. Um, it's a lot quieter, a lot calmer than, than Hanoi yesterday.
everything is just so interesting and fascinating here. We live Chinatown. <laughs> In the real Chinatown. <laughs> So if we read right, this is supposed to be one of the oldest restaurant chains here in Beijing and one of the best places to try Peking duck. And already when we saw the chefs just come past a minute ago with the duck, it smelled absolutely incredible and looked even better. But I cannot wait to try it. I'm so, so excited. It's interesting to feel like everyone knows what they're doing, like what they're ordering. And we have not the foggiest clue <laughs> what's going on. Lost in the corner. We <laughs> lost in the corner. Kind of true. <laughs> the duck looks insane. It smells so good. The juice is just dripping down. And out of my mouth too. <laughs> Oh, that's what you were talking about, to be honest. Sounds so gross. This pastry is so thick, but it holds so well. It doesn't really hold. Oh, it is delicious. Hey guys, we just tried Pekin duck in Pekin. long in your cup this is what it is in an ice cream form mm. jasmine green tea wow that is so unusual let's head to the main square mm -hmm. let's go One first impression of Beijing, considering we're in the very centre, is nowhere near as busy as I thought it was going to be. I don't know why, again, it's just a stereotype that you think in China you're going to be cramped up shoulder to shoulder, there's just going to be people everywhere, but there's so much space, there seems like there's hardly anyone out on the streets. And yeah, you can just you can walk freely between the three of you, talk in a line, and yeah, it's not crowded at all. We're in the centre of the capital right now. It's actually Sunday today as well supposed to be the busiest day it's not yeah you can't say it's not busy it is but not how we expect not crowded be. not crowded I, at I all. didn't expect the roads to be that wide and that big it feels really spacious there were 10,000 bicycles in Beijing and a couple of security checks later welcome to Tiananmen Square a place that I've seen a thousand times on the news, on different travel videos, a place that we've dreamed about coming for a long, long time. It feels so surreal to be here, to be standing on Tiananmen Square, looking at the big photo of Chairman Mao, looking at all the monuments, all the big buildings all around here. 
incredible absolutely incredible it's even bigger in real life as well than it looks on the tv on the camera which to be honest doesn't usually happen usually you get to a place and it's a lot smaller than it looks on camera but yeah this is massive wow incredible in the very heart of china So I just said it's often the case that you see something on TV so many times or on different videos and it looks so much bigger than it actually is in real life but but here it's, it's actually the opposite. bigger yeah 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 it's absolutely grand in scale so as um, foreigners we need to carry our passports with us everywhere and to get into the square you need to go for a few security checks like they check your bags and they check your passports and like everyone goes through but i guess locals have this id cards or yeah. something like that but we have to carry our passports with us we learned that last night when we walked into the square in the evening um we didn't have our passports we were trying to show our pictures uh, our pictures we were trying to show pictures of all our passports and our phones and it was fine but he was like next time just make sure you bring your passports so we did Walking through the middle of Tiananmen Square and seeing all of the internal tourists as well that are here, a lot of people here with suitcases that are obviously passing through Beijing. It's hard to really grasp the size of China, both in terms of area and obviously population. And there's so many different faces that you see from different regions of China as well. It's just incredible. And yeah, to be right here in the heart of Beijing and to see lots of people that have come here from all over the country, it's yeah, incredible. I don't know as well, despite this being the first day of four here in China, I'm already kind of sad we're leaving and I feel like I really want to go off to other regions of the country to see how different people live, different foods, different cultures. It's so, so varied. There's so many different cultures and types of people and religions and histories. And yeah, we're leaving in four days. We We're gonna have to come to back. We need to get a visa and we come back. We need to get a visa and come back. Deal. We've got the little taste of it. We like it. Come back. There's definite Soviet vibes in this main square here in Beijing. I was expecting a lot of similarities between China and the former Soviet Union, obviously with the history over the past 80 years or so. But to be honest, this main square area around here is a lot more similar than I was expecting. And when we were driving in yesterday, a lot of the streets, the apartment blocks, the size of the roads, it's incredibly, incredibly similar to Moscow, for example, St. Petersburg, a lot of former Soviet cities that we've been to. If it wasn't for the Chinese writing, <laughs> you'd think yeah. we could be in Moscow. We all said it last night when we were walking around that if it wasn't for Chinese writing, it's everywhere. And people in general, you'd think that we're in Moscow. It's very strange. I didn't, I didn't expect that. We all said that we didn't have any sort of expectations from China, but we didn't expect it to be that way. If that makes sense, does it? Does it make sense? <laughs> it makes sense. It is unbelievable here. And also, by the way, this is the first time in, I think, three months that we've put trousers and jackets on. It is such a weird feeling to not be sweating and boiling hot. But this square is just absolutely incredible. It is so big. Honestly, the scale of it is just unfathomable. We are all so in love with the weather. I don't know, like, I try 
I tried so hard to be fine with this heat and you know not to pay attention not overthink it but now it's like the perfect weather it's sunny and it's breezy it's so comfortable to walk around and I just feel alive I feel alive Honestly, at every turn, there's something else. We feel like we've left the square and we were heading out of the very centre. And then there's another street, another walking street. And actually, on this walking street we're on here, there's old tram tracks. So I'm guessing the old tram used to run through the city right here into the main Tiananmen Square. So beautiful, isn't it? So colourful. I love all these intricate details there, the colours of it all. We just saw this as we were walking down the street and they sell them everywhere, the candied fruit and guess what this one is? I don't actually know the name in English. <laughs> we'll write it below. We'll write it below. Uh, Mm. Crunchy on the outside, yeah? Ooh, so interesting. So crunchy and the combination of sweet and savoury, so delicious. I can see why they sell them everywhere here. Mm -mm -mm. Have to be careful with the pips though, so many of them. Yeah, it's so nice. We said earlier it wasn't that busy. It seems like we found the crowds now. <laughs> this street is full of all sorts of foods, all sorts of smells from all directions. It is incredible. Lights everywhere. Love it. That looks really interesting as well. What is it? Yeah. Coming to Beijing. Thank you very much. We are brother. What We're, country are you? Uh, England and Russia. Oh, England and Russia. Russia, yes. We are brother. We are all sisters. Yes. <laughs> I agree. We are coming to Beijing. Again. Thank you. Thank you. Xi <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you. See you. <laughs> We've only walked past twice and it's already done my head in. How can you just get used to it? And I don't know, yeah, maybe fade attention. out. It's like living under a flight path or something, isn't it? That looks interesting. Like a steamed cake. Let's try it. Let's try it. Ni hao. Yeah. Do I have absolutely no idea what it is? <laughs> it's 
rice in the sweet syrup. It's quite chewy and gloopy inside. It's not what I expect. I don't know why I thought it's going to be sour. Is it a similar texture, similar texture to mochi or not? No. It's similar to rice pudding. Mmm. In Interesting. flavor, I think, but it's a little more bland. Yeah. It's not. The sweetness comes from the sauce, but itself, this thing is not sweet. This thing. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Expert opinion. This thing does not taste very sweet. Top of So we just got one more snack from the street we were just on. We were just walking right towards the exit and then we saw like a group of people outside of one of the stalls and they were buying this which are beef patties with like a pastry that is incredibly crispy and uh, yeah let's give it a go. Mm. It's like a burger, really peppery, lots of spices but wrapped in a pastry. That's really nice with the meat inside being like a, a minced meat. The texture's quite soft, but then the pastry on the outside gives it a totally different texture. It's lovely, the crunchy, the soft, the peppery, the ever so slight spice in there. It's really juicy as well. Mm, that's lovely. Glad we got that. 12 yuan, so that's about a pound. Just over a pound, amazing. One thing I wanted to add on to the end of talking about that bun was it's really interesting how they have similar types of meat pies and buns all the way along what was the former Silk Road. And obviously Xi'an was the end of the Silk Road on the Chinese start, or the start of the Silk Road. Um, but yeah, the, it's interesting to see the influence here in Beijing and the pies are similar to the pies you see in Central Asia, in the Caucasus, in Turkey, and all the way into Europe. I love it. We're so far away, but also there's so many similarities. What a day. First impressions, as we said a lot of times today, of Beijing are only incredibly, incredibly positive. We've had an amazing day seen some amazing things, tried some amazing things, spoke to some incredibly friendly people. But uh, time's getting on and we have to wake up really early tomorrow morning because we're going to see something special. So we're going to leave you here. So thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.